Okay, so welcome everybody to our Thursday community chat on November 5th. Today we have brand new HR director or director of HR, um, Donna Ray Keneally, and uh, joining your town manager, Paul Bachman, and I am Brianna. Uh, normally we will then um, give Paul a chance to give some updates and then we'll have Donna Ray introduce herself. Great, thank you. Sorry to be late. Um, so the big news for us has been um, the university's reopening plans, which is good. Uh, we had a meeting with them this morning and they uh, were they will be presenting to the town council um, on Monday, starting at 630 um, with a, a bevy of staff who will be there from all different aspects of the university. So that will be a very important presentation that will again be recorded as Monday, November 9th at 630. Um, uh, for the university making uh, presenting its plans and detail more detail about the reopening um, and for the, um, the winter break and for the, in January when they seek to reopen. Um, and then the other thing is just our case counts. Uh, we have we were in red. We came we we ticked down a little bit. You know I think this is a type of thing that's going to um, yo yo up and down during the course of the next few weeks and we're not immune from what's going on in the rest of the state. So we expect to see some variability in the number of cases that we have. Um, so that's it for to begin with. Okay. Thank you for those updates. Um, I, before I kick it off um, over to Donna Ray, I just want to remind those who are live uh, when it comes to Q&A, please use the Q&A function in Zoom or raise your hand via Zoom so we can hear from you live. Um, we have questions that have already been submitted, but we would like to hear from those who are in the room if you'd like. So Donna Ray, could you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Oh, hi, I'm Donna Ray Keneally. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I am the new director of HR and uh, human resources. The skills and experience that bring me to the position are, um, I started my career in 1992 working at the Pioneer Health Group, which is a health insurance company. And I um, specialized in group and employee benefits. And one of the um, plans that I man, one of the group health plans I managed was the Western New England College, then college health plan. And then they were looking for a, a benefits specialist in 2003. And I, I went over to work for them in 2003. And I've um, grown in, in that area over the last 17 years in various positions in human resources. One of the um, attractions for that position for me was the um, tuition benefit. And so I was able to um, earn an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree in business. And um, most recently a Juris Doctor degree from the School of Law. And um, I, to the extent possible, I concentrated my coursework in employment law and labor law. And as of now to this minute, I'm an adjunct faculty member teaching employee benefits at the law school. Um, so those are uh, some of the skills and things that I bring to the position here. Um, uh, on a personal level, so I was born and raised in Ludlow, Massachusetts, and I made a big move in 2009 over to Belchertown when I was remarried. Um, together with my husband, Joe, we have three beautiful children. One is actually a student at UMass right down the street, so I'm waiting to have lunch with him. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we were waiting for a nice day, and today is a very nice day, so I hope to hear from him. And um, we also have three beautiful grandchildren, the loves of my life. And so that's me um, on a personal level too. I mean, just for my point, Donna Ray brings just relentless positive energy and a willingness to participate in things. And I think it's it's um, jumping in with both feet. She's only been here a few days, but already taking on all kinds of things, whether it's collective bargaining uh, situations or working with a looking to work with our diversity group or whatever. And so it's just uh, really um, great to have you here, Donna Ray. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And I added this positive sunflower <laughs> picture for my background. So, you know, I was like, I was looking at the background with Bree right before we, you know, came online and I said, can I just put a picture there? It looks, it looks bland. So yeah, you're, you're, picture. You're, getting, you're like a two out of nine on Room Raider, I think. <laughs> <laughs> She mobilized. She grabbed some tax and was doing it for the viewers. So Real you're welcome. Quick. Thank <laughs> you. Um, yes. Yeah, so thank you. I'm so happy to be here. 
Well, I echo everything that Paul has said and just the short time you've been here, I've um, you've jumped into to a lot of our working groups and it's been great to, to have you on board. So we wanna know what your first impressions are for working for the town, even though you've been here for nine? Nine, nine. today nine is days? day nine, eight complete days. Today's day nine. Um, I also love my drive-in to work. It's, it's very nice. Um, so uh, my impression so far is very positive, of course. Um, I've been able to, so the town offers so many services and I've been able to meet with a lot of people from different departments, the police department, fire department, the DPW, um, libraries, uh, mm. different, different departments, uh, land use planning, and um, just very thoughtful people who wanted to take some time and really tell me what the, you know, the, the value that they, um, their departments are adding to the town. They, they, um, are very thoughtful and, and seem to care a lot about what they do and how they do it. And so it's been very interesting. And I'm looking forward to more tours of more, um, more of our facilities. But I will say on my first day, it was great. I met um, Winston and it was perfect because of course, first day of a new job after 17 years, I was a little nervous and I got to meet the comfort puppy and, and he was wonderful. So very great first impressions. My first day was a snowstorm and the town was closed. So that was my first impression, <laughs> just to balance that with just the puppy. <laughs> um, so another question we have here is, um, you know, as a human resources professional, what kind of approaches or initiatives are you thinking of introducing to the town of Amherst? Well, so first I want to learn everything about what you're already doing. And I have to say some of the things that you're already doing are, are working. And that's kind of reflected in the talent, talented individuals I met. Um, that are, you know, leading a lot of your areas. Um, so I, learning more about the culture here and then hopefully enhancing it is definitely a goal of mine. I think um, workplace culture, I have interest in, I have a background in IT a little bit, um, human resources, information technology. I want to look at, to make sure that, um, you know, we're providing the, the, the best services that are available to kind of, you know, all in the interest of serving the town and helping the employees to best serve the town. Um, oh, one, of, one of the, I think um, I just joined the, the core equity group and I'm very excited to know more about, um, the, I, I think I have a, a, an understanding of the town's views, but kind of to learn more about um, current practices and and I was just become um, I just became a member of the government alliance on race and equity and that's a national uh, network for um, government workers and ch achieving racial equity and advancing opportunities for everyone working in government so I think that will be really helpful to me in terms of working for local government so one of the first things I asked um, when we were talking she's like about her onboarding experience. And Donna Ray said, it's a lot of paper here. And is there any way we can do something better than this? And I said, that's your, okay. You've just assigned yourself the first task, which is look at our onboarding, look at how we're doing things, especially in the pandemic where we ask people to sign lots of things. Is there another way to do things electronically? And so, um, so that's her first task is to sort of monitor how we've onboarded her and how can we do it better. And I think even in one week, we learned to do, do things better with Emma the Dragon, our new health director than we did with Donna Ray. So, um, so I, think, I think that's gonna be interesting to see how you can bring your IT background into some of the decisions and the sort of, uh, I mean, we're not gonna get around that we need a lot of people to sign off on our you know, sexual harassment policy sign off or acknowledge receipt of our IT, our technology use policy, things like that. But is there a better way than giving you a folder fold of paper that then yes, we have to there deal? is. <laughs> yes, there is. There's definitely a better way. Yes. And Donna so Ray and I mission. have already talked about it. <laughs> yes, we did. That was our one of our first topics of conversation. And I think that approach is just really refreshing and welcome. Um, when you come into an organization, you know, we, we've done some work around making that process better for the public, but I love that perspective from especially a new hire, what a lot of us forget because you, you do it once, um, but yes, there's so much room for growth there. And I'm excited that Donna Ray is ready, ready to roll on that. Thank you. But, yeah, and, but, but I do think, you know, there were some things that I found that are 
you know, state of the art, top notch, your application, your applicant management system, you, you have some really <laughs> wonderful things too. So there's always room for improvement, but you're, you're in a good place too. That's a compliment to Brianna right there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, it, me and the HR team that, that worked to implement that because yeah. they were mm -hmm. they were pretty crucial. So we're proud about that. But that just means that we can expand on it now that That's Donna right. Ray is here. So, OK, so um, what do you see, Donna Ray, as the biggest challenges that the town faces in the human resources field right now, whether that's COVID related or um, or otherwise? So so in, in not you know, I'm on day nine, so I'm not speaking really specifically to the town, but just any organization this size, it's usually about promoting a positive workplace culture, especially you, you, there are a lot of different areas. We talked about the different buildings I've been to already. So sometimes it's, you know, we're all on the same team. We all have the same mission of, you know, of servicing the, the town, but sometimes just kind of having everyone together and promoting positive workplace culture and finding ways for constant communication and collaboration, um, I think is something that most organizations um, face challenges in. So just um, promoting positive workplace culture. So that's something I'm very interested in. I have not recognized any problems yet, day nine, but that's something I'll be looking at. And um, there are so many things I see that are happening. For example, you guys won already, um, or last year, an award for workplace wellness. So, and those are ways where you can show care and concern for your employees. There's a lot of things that you can do to say, hey, we're really thankful that you're here and, and um, things like that. And I know you you dove right in and you now part of the, the wellness committee with, yes. with myself and some others. And um, that's been really great to have, have you on board there, especially with your perspective from higher ed and some of the practices you can bring over from um, what's been working in that field. So we're yes. really excited to expand upon that, um, those wellness offerings that we can have for the town, um, for town employees, which then trickle down to how well they can serve, uh, fill, serve their function and um, serve the public. So yep. we're, we're really excited right now to, to have Thank you, you on board on that You know, work. years ago, health insurance companies really didn't do much in terms of wellness and in terms of um, offering, but, um, you know, a few years ago, they started realizing that when you promote wellness, that kind of, you know, it, it, it helps everybody. And so, um, I think they, oh, there's a lot of help from the insurance company that wasn't available before. It's just now you got to know how to get them to give it to you. So hopefully I can be helpful in that with you guys on that committee. And um, I think maybe yoga on the common, some really cool stuff that we could do. That would be great. What do you think employees need most right now? Um, maybe you can't say specifically in Amherst, but just in general, in light of the pandemic and just... Um, various current affairs going on? What's yeah. the focus? Well, I think employers, you know, so your, your best asset is your employees always, that's my opinion. And so um, you want to keep your employees engaged. And so that, especially in the pandemic, it's hard because we're, you know, some of us are remote and I think just communication and um, helping employees to to understand that you are concerned about their safety and, and you, you better be, you should be. And um, so I think, and I, I see that here in town, definitely there's people walking around with yellow shirts, giving me masks. There's all sorts of good stuff going on here, but I think those are important things to help your employees to feel that your care and concern. And, uh, so I'm not I, really um, like a movie star, so I'm not on TV a lot. So I hope I'm doing okay. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. If I You're do really well, I'm going to make my grandkids watch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this, we will share that link with you so you can kind of have a premiere All right. um, <laughs> at home. All right. and, and I think um, you'll get a chance. We'll, we're both Donna Ray, um, Keneally, and our new public health director, Emma Dragon, who hopefully she'll be one of the next guests coming up in a community chat. So you also get to meet with her, um, but they'll get to be introduced to staff um, on Friday, which is really important and difficult when, like you mentioned, Donna Ray, some of us are remote or blended or hybrid. So um, are, you, are you excited to get to connect with the staff on Friday, even though it's going to be virtual? 
Definitely, definitely. And I want to give the message that I am someone who or it's been my practice. I'm, I, I want to, I'm very happy to be here and I want to build up credibility and know that they have a person that they can talk with. And so I think any kind of introduction, whether it's remote or in person is a good way to say, Hey, I'm here. And, you know, please come to me if you need me. It's, it's really a hard time of year during the pandemic. Cause we were talking yesterday about, you know, the town hall would have potlucks, uh, potluck lunches at the drop of a hat almost in any any occasion we could think of flag day, potluck brunch, let's do it. Um, and we can't have those now. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of people still working in town hall, but we're not sharing food, we're creating, you know, social distancing and things like that. So it's kind of, um, it's, 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 it's unfortunate that we're in that situation. Hopefully we get out of it sooner than later, but um, that's kind of an informal contact that we always had with each other is sort of missing. Um, and that's how you build relationships and you say, and people you might not, not otherwise have a reason to you know, talk with about, hopefully you don't have to talk to the parking enforcement officer, but they stop by if, it, if it's food, they're there. Um, yeah. And so, um, so we miss those types of informal ways that we got together as a, as a, as a employee community, uh, which was always very positive. Um, but we're finding other ways. And that's why we do these sort of group um, Zoom calls with 80, 100, um, 80 or 100 employees on asking questions, checking in on how everybody's doing. Um, people are usually just really thrilled to see each other, you know, and right. say, <laughs> how are you doing? I miss you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a chance to show off your best background or your best coffee mug too. So there's that's right. There's all kinds of ways. This that is my co coffee mug for the day. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I want to remind um, the folks in the room. We've got about ten more ten more minutes. So if you do want to ask a question, it does not have to be um, human resources related. Although you're welcome to ask questions about that. Um, feel free to raise your hand via Zoom, star nine from the phone, or pop your Q and A. Um, your question into the Q&A box. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Well, one thing I, I, I will mention uh, while we wait quickly, maybe for a couple of questions to come in is um, the new, uh, the town manager now has his, an archive of his reports mm. online on his webpage. Um, we also have created a new way for you to subscribe to those reports. Um, and there's a, they're chock full of information. So just talking about keeping people connected, um, it's something that we'll encourage our employees to sign up for probably tomorrow, <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's great for the public. Um, you can get a, a text message or, or an email when the latest report has come out and look at all of the previous reports that Paul has prepared. And you can do that from amherstma.gov slash town manager or amherstma.gov slash notify me to get access to all of our categories. So quick plug there. Nice. <laughs> um, I don't see any hands in the room and um, at, the, at the moment. So I would love to ask both of you if there's anything you didn't get asked yet or anything that you thought of while we were talking that you mm -hmm. think is important to share. Yeah, so I, I, I would, I'll take the liberty of jumping in. Um, so last weekend was Halloween, we had 80, Eight zero registered parties um, that through our party registration system that the Amherst Police Department works with the university to do. Um, there were no noise complaints from those. The largest party I think was 12. Um, there were noise complaints about other locations which we responded to and they, we gave out citations in the negative sense of the word um, uh, for violation of the town bylaw. Uh, this week, I think there are only two parties that have been registered. So that's um, down. I think people got partied out last weekend because of Halloween. I mean, it was it was Halloween. It was a it was a you know the time was changing. Um, you know, it, and we it was the um, full moon, so we we were anticipating the worst, but it didn't turn out to be that bad actually, in terms of uh, noise complaints and things like that. Going forward. Um, with the governor's order, we will not be doing using the party party registration system with the university because we feel like that might encourage parties, and that's not the message we want to be sending. There's only three weekends left in the two weekends actually left in the school year on their last day of classes, November twentieth, and so that's the Friday before Thanksgiving. So there won't most people if they're on if they're in the area they tend to leave around that time anyway. Um, so uh, I think we have. Um, 
survived the fall semester with the university. We've learned a lot through the process and uh, enough, I think, for the, that the university felt comfortable moving forward. Um, the governor's orders, I think, are going to create a new level of um, concern for folks because it does limit the number of people who can be gathered indoors at to 10 is used in, but you still, if you're not a member of the household, you still have to socially distance yourselves from each other in, in the house, if you're in the house. Um, we don't plan on knocking on doors and counting heads, um, but I think we will get complaints of, uh, and our COVID hotline has been really good at managing these things. So I think, you know, things keep changing. We keep responding to those things. Um, and so I think that's sort of the biggest thing that impacts the, the, the um, public right now. We've been interacting with our uh, restaurant industry, industry, the restaurants, this is, you know, we don't have that many. Um, and they want to know, they were seeking clarification. What does the governor's order mean? Does it mean we have to stop serving at 9.30? Is 9.30 the last call? Tell us, give us more guidance on how that works. And so, you know, again, Amherst Police Department, Inspection Services, our health director are all working with the business community to provide clarification. So everybody wants to do the right thing. They just want to know what are the rules for it. And there isn't a lot of clarification coming from the state. So we're trying to be in sync with the other other cities and towns that are around us. So, I mean, it, you know, as, as I'm talking, I'm realizing almost everything is about COVID one way or the other. There's something about COVID and it's just is dominating town operations, uh, it seems like. Yes, absolutely. And, and I, I will mention, you know, just as a, as a general plug to, to get those local um, active case counts for Amherst, you can visit our um, regular homepage, amherstma.gov, where you can link out to our COVID specific page. Uh, if you want to go directly there, it's amherstcovid19.org. We update um, Monday through Friday with the current active case counts, and we also reflect the cumulative cases um, for you to look at as well as other information that's pertinent, um, the gover governor's orders and, um, and some various resources for folks related to COVID. Okay. Can I, can I mention one last thing? Mm -hmm. I know we can wrap, we're gonna wrap up momentarily. Uh, so next Wednesday, November 11th is Veterans Day um, and the town offices will be closed, but uh, we are, um, you know, I think town employees are, are gonna be going out to the veterans that we've identified in our community um, and giving uh, gift bags to folks. Um, and I think also, you know, the, the VFW and the American Legion are, will be doing some very small ceremony because we, it can't be big. It won't be advertised in advance. They'll just do it as a, to maintain the tradition of honoring the veterans uh, who served um, the country. So we aren't forgetting Veterans Day. It's just, we're not, we just can't have large gatherings like we have had in the past. And it's important to acknowledge that. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, Donna Ray, any last uh, parting words you want to leave for our viewers that you didn't get a chance to say yet? I just look forward to, uh, to meeting everybody, and I'm very grateful to be here. That's it. Great. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I know it's only day nine. Uh, we usually give people a couple weeks to settle in, but we figured you were up for the task. So thank you for thank joining you. us today. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you. And thank you all who are watching um, right now and from uh, post we will be back next Thursday at noon um, in the same the same link Thanks, Brianna. thank you all thank you bye-bye